This pot makes a great 3D printed gift or even a product to sell online. Watch the bottom left corner for keyboard shortcuts. First, let's follow Fusion's golden rule. Create a new component. This design starts with two polygon sketches at different Z levels. I'll use a circumscribed polygon for the first sketch, centering it around the origin on the existing horizontal construction plane. I'll set the distance to 50 mm, making the polygon 100 mm in diameter. But feel free to experiment with your own dimensions. Tweaking the signs helps you learn faster. Here's a pro tip. Save a few clicks over time by activating the next command, in this case the offset plane, without closing the contextual sketch environment first. I'll set the offset to 50 mm and use it as the base for our next sketch. For this sketch, I'll use an inscribed polygon, starting at the origin and finishing 50 mm above it. Now, we have two polygon sketches stacked at different heights, perfect for the next steps in the workflow. We'll connect the sides with minimal input. Instead of manually lofting every side, which increases the risk of misalignment. Lofting a single sketch line from the lower polygon to a midpoint on the upper polygon is faster and more precise. The sketches were automatically hidden, but if you like to see them, just toggle visibility back on. We'll use a circular pattern to distribute the lofted surface around the model. If you center your design on the origin, the blue axis is easily accessible at the center, making this step quick and precise. For the quantity, we need six instances. That looks perfect. I'll confirm with OK. Now, let's repeat the steps for the remaining pieces in the pattern. While I could have created two lofts at once and then used a single circular pattern, I'm demonstrating it step by step to make it easier to follow. Once you're comfortable with the process, feel free to speed things up by combining the steps. The surfaces appear in different colors, though I'm not entirely sure what the orange and gray color coding means. If you know, feel free to share your explanation in the comments below. The orange surfaces indicate those currently active in the command, and the combination of orange and gray clearly highlights the different angled surfaces we've created so far. Use the patch command to close the top and bottom of your model. For the bottom, you can easily select the boundary edges with Sketch 1 visibility turned on. Right click the Fusion Canvas to repeat the last command, then use the same workflow to patch the top of your model. Even though the model is closed, it's important to note that it's still made up of infinitely thin surfaces, as shown in this section analysis. This is easy to address. We'll turn our surface model into a solid model. Let me first toggle off the visibility of the section analysis before I show you how. The solution is to use the stitch command on the connected surfaces. Once the model is stitched together, you can confirm the result by turning the section analysis back on. The hatched area inside shows that this is now a solid model. We always aim to simplify data input. For example, instead of repeating the entire process, we simply mirror the design and join the mirrored part with the original body. We now have a solid body and our next step is to create a hollow interior. While it's not strictly necessary, I'll turn off the sketch visibility to get a clearer view before we proceed. Use the shell command to remove the inside of the solid model. I'm setting the thickness to 3mm, which I think strikes a good balance between 3D printing time, quality and material usage. A quick check from the top view using the view cube confirms that the shell operation was successful with the bottom intact as planned. 
Fillet is a great way to add details that make your design stand out. There are plenty of settings to explore, but for this tutorial, I'll go with a small standardized fillet. For appearance, I'll link to another video at the end where I cover custom appearances. For now, I'm using one of the standardized metal flake colors. The pot looks great, and I'm excited to share some useful rendering tips in the render workspace. Remember to save your project regularly. It's essential to save before setting up your rendering and exporting to ensure the latest data is included in the cloud transfer. We'll render the scene from the same angle we view the object. Scene settings are easily accessed through the right-click menu. For this render, I'm switching from a solid color background to an environment. Simply drag and drop the photo booth scene onto the canvas to change the background. Positioning the lighting is intuitive, and as you might expect, different backgrounds affect the lighting. You can also reposition the object for a different view or adjust the focal length for an optimized render. Once you're happy with the settings, go to the render settings. I recommend checking the width and height before starting the cloud render. Your render will appear in the bottom left corner and is easily accessible once it's finished. Let's return to the design workspace and explore one of the key benefits of parametric modeling. While I like this design, it's easy to update it by adjusting a feature in the timeline. Let's edit the sketch for the upper polygon. The sketch is easy to edit with dimensions. The current radius is 50 mm, but what if we increase it to 75 mm? The entire polygon sketch adjusts instantly, and now we have a top polygon that's clearly larger than the one on the bottom. Once we finish the sketch, we can see that all subsequent actions in the timeline reflect this change, giving us a bold new design with minimal data input. This shows that with a well thought out sequence of actions, we can create exciting opportunities to iterate on our designs. I hope you enjoyed this Autodesk Fusion tutorial, where you learned how to create a great looking pot designed for additive manufacturing. Another exciting opportunity is to take it further and design a mold for injection molding. If you like this tutorial, check out the one where I show you how to 3D model a lampshade with a matching custom color palette. Thanks for watching, and if you're a subscriber, see you soon in the next Fusion project.